Since the Apollo missions to the moon ended, most of us have had relatively little exposure to NASA and its subsequent activities. So what else has NASA done for us lately, except inspire the creation of Tang and space blankets? Hello, and welcome to E0. On this channel, we usually cover electric vehicle news, updates, and content. However, today, NASA has a breakthrough in solid-state batteries that we couldn't help but share with you. The fascinating sulfur-selenium solid-state battery. Within the framework of its Solid-State Architecture Batteries for Enhanced Rechargeability and Safety Program, SABERS, NASA has spent a significant amount of time and resources investigating the feasibility of battery-powered flying. SABERS continues to exceed its goals, said Rocco Vigiano, the chief investigator for SABERS at NASA's Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, in a news statement from the previous year. We are beginning to approach this new frontier in battery research that has the potential to achieve a great deal more than what is now possible with lithium-ion batteries. According to Vigiano, a battery may be compared to a bucket since it retains energy, and having more energy storage capacity is analogous to having a bigger bucket. The energy density of their prototype sulfur-selenium battery is 500 watt-hours per kilogram, which is about twice that of standard lithium-ion batteries. However, airplanes need a tremendous amount of power in order to take off from the ground. Up until fairly recently, lithium-ion batteries were able to release the power they had accumulated in a far more rapid manner than could solid-state batteries. Now, the Sabres researchers, with the assistance from their collaborators at Georgia Tech, have discovered a technique to make their solid-state batteries discharge 10 times quicker than they did when the project first began. After that, they got another rise that was five times greater than the previous one. And now they have a bigger bucket that's capable of being quickly emptied whenever it's required. The Sabres team has come up with further advancements that have resulted in the bucket being up to 40% lighter. The sulfur-selenium battery cells that they use may be layered one on top of the other without any case being placed around them. If the casing that normally surrounds individual cells is removed, then more energy may be stored within the same amount of space. And this is a significant benefit when it comes to incorporating batteries into the framework of an airplane. Additionally, this enables the cooling systems for the cells to be more compact and lower in weight. There are further benefits to this as well. The large quantities of energy that are required at the start of every flight might cause the temperatures within the battery cells to skyrocket and the standard lithium-ion batteries can only survive temperatures up to half of what NASA's solid-state sulfur-selenium batteries are capable of withstanding. In addition, they are less influenced by shifts in pressure, which often occur during takeoff and landing, but are less noticeable to them. So, the proponents of electric flying have received nothing but positive feedback up to this point. Is there a potential downside to this? The price has a significant role. The testing procedures that must be followed before new parts can be used in commercial airplanes are far more stringent than those that must be followed for standard automobiles. It is possible that the cost of a sulfur-selenium battery for a passenger car would be prohibitively expensive. But if airlines and air taxi businesses could stretch the expense of purchasing such a battery out over thousands of trips, it might make more economic sense for them. Regarding the topic of air taxis, there are now two different designs that are being considered. Once they hit their normal level, United Airlines' wing-type planes need less power to stay in the air than other types of planes. And the second one comes from Archer Aviation and employs what are essentially bigger drones. In order for them to remain airborne, the rotors of these drones need to be subjected to continual high-power consumption, which means that they use a lot of electricity constantly and have a limited range. Planning for Advanced Mobility in the Air at NASA NASA is devoting a significant amount of resources to researching how improved air transportation may function. A portion of this effort is determining how to incorporate air taxis, robotic package deliverers, and emergency medical services into current flight corridors in order to prevent aircraft from colliding with one another while they are in the air. According to NASA, innovative people working in the aviation business are already working on the design of ride-sharing air services between homes and airports. Aircraft that are either remotely piloted or operated on their own 
will make air travel more accessible to the general population than it has ever been before. Additionally, NASA is investigating the technology that this new highly digital future airspace will need in order to be successful. The organization is looking for several design and operating possibilities for circumstances in which aircraft will land and take off, as well as the manner in which aircraft will be constructed, powered, and maintained. This study, together with other studies, will give insights that will assist businesses in developing an accessible environment that is optimal. There are now over 5,000 public airports in operation in the United States. Passengers will have access to these airports through a variety of innovative means thanks to AAM. The same air taxi services that allow passengers to fly rapidly from rural regions or cities to board commercial airliners also provide these passengers with improved access to medical treatment and the ability to buy items. AAM's goal is to provide the general public with access to aviation resources that are both reasonably priced and highly effective, therefore facilitating the participation of a greater number of individuals in the provision of novel on-demand services. As is the case with commercial air travel in the modern day, modifications will need to be made to these aircraft in order to accommodate passengers with varying degrees of capability. To make an airplane compatible with the Americans with Disabilities Act, this can include building ramps for wheelchair access, specific seats and seat belts, as well as enhanced visual and audio assistance. It will be necessary for NASA to combine its research efforts in the areas of air traffic management, automation, noise, and safety in order to make these activities a reality. Also, in order to securely incorporate this new type of aircraft, it will be necessary for government agencies, industry, and the general public to unite their efforts. The goal of NASA is to collaborate with community and industry partners, as well as the FAA, in order to design a new air transportation system that is inexpensive, accessible, and safe. Thus, these new capabilities would make it possible for people and goods to fly on demand in cutting-edge airplanes that are fully automated whether it be inside the city, between cities that are nearby, or to faraway areas that are generally reachable by automobile today. The solid-state battery breakthrough could completely alter the airline industry. The transportation industry is one of the most significant contributors to climate change in the world. It is responsible for roughly a quarter of the total carbon emissions that are caused by energy use around the globe, and air travel is one of the most significant offenders. In addition, the burning of jet fuel not only releases carbon into the atmosphere, but also creates nitrogen oxides, soot, water vapor, and sulfate aerosols, all of which interact with the atmosphere and have an effect on the climate in different ways and at different timescales. However, not only will the new batteries be able to electrify airplanes, which will eliminate carbon and non-carbon emissions connected with the burning of jet fuel, but these groundbreaking solid-state batteries also manage to avoid the use of lithium, which is one of the most significant trade-offs that is involved with the process of electrification in general. In addition, the need for lithium in the construction of a large number of components for clean energy infrastructure has resulted in escalating prices and an attitude of scarcity. And for Sabres, the most important thing is to steer out of this uncomfortable circumstance entirely. Safety. When discussing any kind of advancement in the aviation industry, a primary issue and priority is always safety. And solid-state batteries alleviate important safety problems that are associated with lithium-ion batteries, which contain a highly flammable liquid that has a long history of leaking, necessitating additional casing that makes the batteries heavier. Because solid-state batteries do not contain any liquid at all, they may be stacked in designs that are more efficient with space and they can continue to function normally even after they have been damaged. This kind of resilience is very necessary when considering the radical changes in temperature that the airplanes go through throughout the course of a trip. Despite the fact that the technology is fresh and new and is not yet practicable on a commercial scale, it has immense potential for disruption. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Aviation is widely recognized as a hard-to-decarbonize sector, having a strong dependence on liquid fossil fuels and an infrastructure that has a long lock-in timescales, which results in slow fleet turnover times. 
If these solid state batteries can be manufactured at scale and a cost that is competitive with existing options, there will be huge advantages for the global climate objectives as well as the transportation industry. And that wraps things up. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we'll see you in the next one.